Okay, so I was um, in April 2015. Uh, there was a huge earthquake in Nepal. Um, so within 48 hours, we for, within 48 hours we had an advanced team heading to Nepal. Uh, that advanced team included me and another two more volunteers. Um, the role of an advanced team for us is to is to do a site visit on which is the which is the best site for our medical teams to be deployed. So before even deploying the medic, uh, before even deploying the uh, advanced team, we already had a medical team on standby. Um, we already have ready supplies for for distribution on site. The the supplies include um, emergency food and non food items. Um, so when we were in Nepal, everything was still in a mess because it was uh, less than two days of the disaster. We see a lot of shelters put up. But the shelters can never be. The shelters are not enough compared to the people who were displaced. Um, there were people still asking us for help. There were uh, a lot of people who were desperate um, and in need of um, food items, shelter, and also medical items. Um, when we sent our first team to Cox Bazaar, that was in 2017. Um, we actually had um, when I was there with my team, we actually. We actually saw and witnessed a lot of people who were walking down into Cox Bazaar. Um, we went to a camp that had actually about 20 families and we decided to do uh, food distribution at the area. The next day we went there and we saw, and we saw two, more than 2,000 families there. Um, so when we were there, it was very fluid. Um, we did not know how to... Exp it's very hard for us to predict what will happen. Um, the, the situation was um, quite vital because the, the people were coming in thousands and tens of thousands and at the peak we actually, uh, we actually get to see 600,000 people in a, in a small camp in Cox Bazaar. Um, so when you have an area like Cox Bazaar, you do not have, without any infrastructure, no schools, no clinics, um, you can imagine uh, what kind of um, disasters could, what kind of humanitarian disasters could happen within the camp. Um, we actually have a lot of support in Singapore, a lot of kind souls and volunteers who are medically trained, and uh, we have people who are healthcare trained. Um, we were able to put up, we were able to put up a team um, who are who can last for almost a month in Cox Bazaar. Um, so uh, that team can would, would be able to, at that time would be able to see about 300 people a day, um, mostly facing uh, most most of the people are facing uh, difficulties because of the heart because of the heart condition in the camp itself. Um, of course, uh, I would it, it's also very we we were also very thankful to have the support from the Bangladesh Red Crescent. Um, the IFRC and the ICRC for their support. Within the Red Cross movement, we share information with each other. Um, we were able to share our plans to, 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 to be able to work as a big team. And I, I think that that's a, a very good advantage as working, uh, to be working together. We have a very challenging 2018. Uh, we have a lot of, we have earthquakes and floods that were affecting us. Um, just within just within a period of six months, we had a, a total of 50 volunteers who were responding to disasters in four to five countries. The countries that we re respond to include Laos, Myanmar, India, Indonesia. Of course, the, the biggest disaster that we all remember in Indonesia was the Palu earthquake. And um, we had a team that, go on the that went onto the ground uh, within 48 hours. Uh, when we went on the ground, um, we realised that there were people who are, uh, who are lack of food and non-food items. Their home were washed away. Um, they, they have lost their schools, they lost their hospitals, common facilities. And in a very short period, we have to provide for so many people who are need it, needed. I've been responding to many disasters in the past seven years of my career in Red Cross. In every mission, I have faced many, diff uh, many sad stories. And every sad story uh, would affect me emotionally even when I come back to Singapore. Um, but looking at what I've done, um, I feel very satisfied and fulfilling 
at my, at my work at Red Cross. During the 70th anniversary of the Singapore Red Cross, I would like to thank the volu our volunteers and our members for supporting Singapore Red Cross. I'm, I'm referring to the volunteers who are on roster with us um, during our disaster missions, those who have sacrificed their time, their efforts, and sometimes their life to support those who are in need. Um, of course, there are many volunteers in Singapore Red Cross who have supported us locally, um, those who support us in first aid coverage, uh, those who support us in transport aid, and also those who support our thrift shop or even our flag days. Without their support, nothing can be done.